Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk more about exponential word problems. Today will be day two. Uh, our main focus today will be on half-life problems. You may recognize these from science. Um, so half-life is the time it takes for something to half. So here's the formula. Half-life equals P times 0.5 to the T over H. T is the time in the question, P is the starting value, and H is the half-life. So let's see if we can try example number one. So it says a new car is purchased for 30000 so the $30,000 is your purchase price. And since the purchase price is what we are starting with, we're going to say that 30,000 is my P. Then it says, and over time, its value depreciates. So depreciate means loses value, right? By one half every five years. So this one half every five years is actually your half-life. So we can go ahead and label that with H. Capital H is my half-life. What is the value of the car after 11 years? So this 11 years is your time, the time in the question, so that's T, after it was purchased. And they want to round to the nearest $100. So let's write the formula. A equals P 0.5 to the T over H. So P is 30,000, 0.5 stays 0.5, the T is my 11, and the H is my 5. So go ahead, pause the video, type this into the calculator just the way you see it, and then hit resume when you're ready for the answer. Okay, so you should be getting 6529.1. 29, and then so on and so on. Now it's not asking for the nearest hundredths, right? It's saying nearest hundred years. So this says 6,529. So since the 29 is not bigger than 50, we're gonna leave it as 6,500. If the 29 was bigger than 50, then we'd round it to 6,600. So we're gonna say the answer to the nearest hundred is 6,500 dollars. You don't need the zero zero, but I'm just being exact. All right, let's try another example. So example number two, the half-life of a radioactive substance is the average amount of time it takes for half of its atoms to decay. Suppose you started with 200 grams of a substance with a half-life of three minutes. To the nearest tenth, how much is the substance is left after 12 minutes? So this is more or less like your science problems, right? So suppose you started with 200 grams. That means P is my start value. And a half-life tells you half-life of three minutes. So the three is your H. So let's start with the formula. A equals P 0.5 to the T over H. So since P is 200, and 0.5 stays, they want to know how much is left after 12 minutes. So your 12 minutes, your time is 12. So the 12 goes on top, and H, my half-life, is 3. So why don't you take a minute, plug this into the calculator just the way you see it, and then hit resume when you're ready for the answer. Okay, so your answer should be 12.5 grams. Now this question is actually very unique because we actually can do it by hand. And I'm going to show you how half-life works when you have an even number of half-lives. So let's just say you're starting with 200 grams. And every three minutes, we're going to half. So after three minutes, I want to half this. So we know 200 would then go to 100. Then another three minutes would go by and we'd be at six minutes. And then we would half that. That would be 50. And then at three minutes again, we're at nine minutes. Half that and we're at 25. And then add three more minutes, we're at 12. And if we half 25, we actually get 
12.5 grams. So this is a perfect example of something that you can do by hand. Why? Because 12 is a multiple of your half-life, which is three minutes. So a question like part B, we wouldn't be able to do the same way, and I'm going to show you why. So same scenario. Let's try to do it by hand first, and we can maybe estimate what our answer will be. So we're going to start with the 200 grams, and that's our start. And every three minutes, we're going to half it. So three minutes, we're in the same scenario as before. We're at 100 grams. We're halving it. And then how about at six minutes? Three more minutes, right? Every three minutes, it's halving. So that's going to be 50 grams like we did before. And then add three. We're at nine minutes. So that was um, 25. And then... 12 minutes, we were at the 12.5. But the problem is, is the question is asking us to find it after 10 minutes. So 10 minutes is going to be somewhere between here and here. And there's no way of finding exactly what it's going to be without actually using the calculator. But we know that our answer will be in between 25 and 12.5, right? Those two values. So let's use the formula and plug in and see if we get that. So A equals P 0.5 to the T over H. So my starting value is still 200. The time this time is 10 minutes. The half-life hasn't changed. That's still 3. So why don't you take a minute, plug this into your calculator, and then hit resume when you're ready for the answer. All right, so you should be getting... 19.8425 and so on and so on. Question says round to the nearest tenth. So approximately 19.8 grams would be left. So 19.8 is definitely a number that would be in between 25 and 12. So works for me. All right, what about part C? So part C asks, to the nearest tenth, how much of the substance is left after one hour? So the problem here is that I'm changing my units. We're talking about minutes, and now I'm talking about hours. So and one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. So for my time, T, I would use the 60 instead of the one hour. Now, we probably could do this by hand because if the half-life, H, is every three minutes, 60 is a multiple of three, so it would go in evenly and it would actually work, but you would be here for 20 different intervals, right? You'd have to go uh, 20 different halves to get to 60, because 60 divided by three is 20. So this is where the um, doing by hand wouldn't be as helpful, but the formula would be. So A equals P 0.5 to the T over H. My starting value is still 200. My 0.5 stays the same. The T this time is 60. And then my half-life is 3. So go ahead, plug this into the calculator, and then hit resume when you're ready for the answer. All right. So you should have gotten a very, very interesting number. You should have gotten 1.907 and then a whole bunch of numbers. And then there's an E to the negative 4 next to it. So you have to understand that that means scientific notation. So this E to the negative 4 means times 10 to the negative 4. And if you remember how scientific notation works, if you have a negative exponent, you're going to move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the left. If it was a positive, you'd be moving it to the right. So the decimal point is now here, and we have to fill it in with zeros. So we have our final answer to be 0 0.0001907, so on and so on. I know the directions say round to the nearest tenth, but that would be zero here. So I'm going to just leave it as something along this line is how much grams would be left. 
after an hour. So a very, very, very small amount. Okay. So now what I want you to think about between now and tomorrow is will our number ever reach zero? Is it possible for a half-life to get down to zero? So think about that and we'll discuss it more in class tomorrow. All right. Have a great night.